Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about sword and shield fighting. Okay, I'm using a full size heater shield. Okay, uh, now the thing with the heater shield is basically I'm primarily blocking with the corners. Okay, uh, that corner over here is blocking my you know my head. Right, I, I'm not blinding myself. I'm kind of just looking around that corner. This back corner is catching any stuff that comes around to the back. Uh, that corner back there. Uh, is is basically blocking my leg. I'll back up a little bit more so you can see how it's blocking my leg. Okay, now it's um, now because I only have one corner at the bottom, you know I can't stand with my feet like that, you know, side by side because obviously this leg would be open. I have to keep one leg back. Okay, now that actually facilitates a lot of my fighting because what, what's happening a lot of times as I'm fighting, I'm you know by keeping this hip back, I'm able to bring it. You know into the strike you know and use that to power my blows okay okay um, now as far as protecting the low leg what I want to use for that is my distance okay because what's gonna happen is um, at standing at this distance here okay I can reach the head okay I can reach basically the knee area okay the knee you know the knee area and just above that okay I can't reach the low leg, and the reason for that is because the distance going across is shorter than the distance going down diagonally, okay? So um, so one of the things I want to be mindful of my range, in order for me to hit that low leg, basically I need to step in. Um, now, over here, obviously I can hit the low leg, but at the same time, my low leg is equally open. Um, so I want to, you know, basically I don't want to lose my leg. Um, and I don't want to attack in such a way that would be suicidal. Okay, I want to win this fight. I don't want to come out of this fight uh, victorious but crippled. Okay, now the um, the the armor that we're simulating here is male armor, and uh, you know that was used for a very long time uh, during hi you know human history. I mean, it, it was used during Roman times. Uh, it was used all through the uh, uh, Dark Ages uh, and into the High Middle Ages. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of times people tend to focus on on plate armor uh, without realizing that plate armor was only worn for a sh very short period of maybe 100 to 100 full year, uh, 150 years. You know, as far as a full, full suit of plate, uh, and also that was, you know, the, the number of people that actually had plate armor was somewhat limited. Okay, uh, most people, even in the high Middle Ages, would have had male, possibly male with with with. Um, uh, plate in certain places okay um, the other thing is that the helmet that they would have worn uh, would have been basically you know they would have most likely had a uh, a male coif okay which basically would have been a, a, a male hood um, and and over that they would have had a uh, you know a a, a, a nasal helm uh, nothing more than a pound and a half two pounds um, and the, the reason is that if, it, if it, you know, basically people lived in their armor. Okay, if you're walking around with more than you know two pounds, a two pound helmet for a long period of time, uh, you're going to end up with with a, with a neck ache, with a headache. Um, so the you know people spent more time wearing their armor rather than fighting in their armor. Okay, so that's the reason why these strikes would be effective. Okay, they would be effective because even though people had had armor on their heads. Uh, it was, you know, fairly light, okay? Uh, and the same thing with the male that they wear through their body, throughout their bodies. I mean, they were male over a light, a lightly padded gambeson. Um, you know, you couldn't cut through the gambeson, uh, but you could, uh, you know, break bones uh, through the gambeson, okay? Um, you know, if you hit somebody on the collarbone, you could break the collarbone. If you hit somebody in the shin, you could break the shin. If you hit somebody on the forearm, you could break that forearm. Uh, so, so, so there's a lot of small bones in the body that are very vulnerable, um, you know, even through male. Okay, so now let's let's talk about um, the shield. I have here a shield, uh, and basically I have it situation just like the way I would hold my shield, right? So I have my shield here, and basically I am attacking around my shield okay? because I can't cut through my shield. Okay, I'm attacking around my shield while keeping my corner up. Okay, so high up here, high up here to the leg here, inside the shield there, over there, over there, okay? Um, so let's talk about some of those cuts that I just showed you and break them down, okay? Uh, basically, you know, there's, there's many different styles of shield, of, sh of, of shield, 
you know this one is a heater and basically I am attacking along the the edges of the shield so if this was a, a shield that was shaped differently right let's say it came to a diamond top okay I would have to match my cut uh, to the basically to the angle of the shield in this case the way this person would be hold the way I would be holding my shield with with the corner up you know basically I, I need to basically you know um, get around you know past this edge over here okay so so one of the ways to do is basically I can lift my hand up dip the sword down okay so basically I can match that edge okay uh, I can even make a molene where I basically I drop my tip and I make a downward uh, chop um, in the um, you know I, I've also studied the uh, the, the uh, longsword manuals uh, basically this would be the war child this war child which is basically a horizontal strike and you can do it to the right side or to the left side or you can tick tock back and forth from one side to the other okay so we see that in the German manuals uh, and then the other, uh, you know, what I call the Molene, uh, they call the uh, Strutzhau, which is basically a plunging strike, right, where the sword comes over the top, comes down, you know, my hand is pretty much behind my shield as I'm doing that, um, so that's, that's the cut, okay, um, so, so uh, the other strike is basically uh, an inside cut to the inside here, um, and to me, that's very similar to the uh, 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 to the shile how in the in the long sword system. I'll do it from this side here so that you can see it. Okay, and what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm bringing my sword over to this side and I'm cutting around to the inside like that, right? So you can see, you know, and usually I'll, I'll I'll do some type of a distraction shot and bring that in. Or do we cut here? Okay. So so that's basically you know we call this a slot shot. Uh, in the SCA, um, so basically it's coming in on the inside. So as I'm standing here, the blow would be attacking me uh, here. Okay. Uh, the other possibility is a uh, is a an offside that comes in deep. Okay. Uh, sometimes people will will wind this up. They'll cut over to this side and, and use the momentum to come around to that side. Um, it's also very deceptive, basically. You know, uh, basically, I can either come straight in and attack like that, or I can wind up to this side. Oops, right, wind up to this side and come into the to the to, to that side over here. And I'll do it on this side so that you can see it. Okay, so what this strike looks like: come up, boom. Okay, so that's going into the armpit, boom. You know, that can also go to the inside of the head. Okay, I can bring it up high like that. I can bring it low, okay. Um, so that that's a uh, another popular uh, strike that's made. Also, as far as the leg shots, basically, it's usually a straight strike like that. What I can also do is I can also lower my body to gain a little bit more of an angle. Now, as I lower my body, I basically gotta lift my shield up uh, a little bit higher because I'm changing my angle relative to my opponent. Okay. So if I'm gonna drop down to go try to get a better angle on the leg, I have to bring that that corner up um, now a, a lot of times the way you know all advanced fighting is about deception okay so basically well you know there's a couple ways to see my point you know I can throw a bunch of strikes up there and then throw to the leg okay okay I can also start up here and then drop to the leg okay or I can throw a bunch of strikes to the leg and then bring it up what I'm doing is I'm dipping down and then coming up dip down come up okay uh, now the other thing I can do is I can roll that over on the back edge. Okay, we call that a wrap. Um, and basically, it's the same cut where I would be like this, except I'm just throwing it out there and just letting it roll over. Okay, and basically I'm using the centripetal force to wrap to the, either the back of the head or the back of the leg. Okay. Okay. So basically, I'm trying to get around the shield. Um, and that's what, what this fighting is it basically is all about. If the other guy's got a shield, you need to defeat the shield. Um, a lot of times when I see people, uh, beginners, or people who are less experienced doing sword and shield fighting, uh, they focus a lot on, on doing, you know, shield presses, you know, where you're pressing on the shield here to lock it in place, and then striking there, or, or hooking, push opening, it, you know, hooking, bringing it open, and then striking it that way, um, which are effective. Okay, and they work, 
But the thing is, you want to have more than just that, okay? Uh, you want to have the ability to do more than just bully your way uh, through somebody's shield. The, the, the thing is, as I stick my shield out and try to pull it, like you can see how guarded I am here. If I reach out, I mean, you can see how I just open myself up when I try to reach out too far. Okay, not to mention that my, you know, obviously I, with a big shield like this, I'm putting a lot more strain on my arm. My arm is going to get tired a lot faster. Typically with a shield of this size, you keep it close to your body. And basically you, you know, you make minimal, you know, minimal uh, motions with the shield. You don't want to, you don't want to move the shield around too much because you're going to, you're going to tire out really quickly with a shield this size. Okay. So, uh, those are the main strikes uh, I wanted to show you guys um, because, you know, we've been talking a lot about swordsmanship. Uh, you see me guys use long swords. You see me use uh, a buckler. Um, but I wanted to show you, um, you know, how shield on sh shield on shield fighting works. Um, I have done some, there are some older videos on my channel that show me fighting against other people with shields. Um, Basically, the uh, I have to make a point that next time I'm, I'm at practice fighting, doing some shield on shield fighting, uh, I have to make a point of uh, uh, making a video for you guys to check out. Uh, uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Talk to you guys next time.